Hello everyone, let's start with the next topic which is energy management approach. So let us see the various energy management approaches. So first is understanding energy cost. Yes, it is the most important one. We need to understand the energy cost for the awareness creation and saving calculation. We know that in industry there are various meters but if the meters are not available to measure all the energy used then invoices for the fuels and electricity will be useful for understanding the energy cost. So let us see energy invoices can be used for the following purpose. So first is they provide a record of energy purchased each year which gives a baseline for the future reference. So, uh, the record of the energy purchase will give a baseline. Next is, energy invoices may indicate the potential for saving when related to the production requirement or to the air conditioning requirement or space heating requirement, etc. Next one is, when electricity is purchased based on the maximum demand tariff, Next one is they can suggest where savings are most likely to be made. And the last one, in later years, the invoices can be used to quantify the energy and cost saving made through the energy conservation methods. So these are the details you can get from the energy invoices. Now, the major energy costs are for the fuel cost and the power cost. So, let's see one by one. Fuel cost, a wild variety of the fuels are available for thermal energy supply. So, it can be coal, it can be light diesel oil or it can be wood. So, while purchasing this fuel, some points are to be considered that is availability, cost and quality. Now, what are the factors that should be considered during the procurement of the fuel for energy efficiency and the economics? So, first is price at the source because it, uh, the fuel price keeps on varying. Next is transportation charge so what are the transportation charge and type of transportation it may be through road or it may be through rail next is quality of the fuel quality of the fuel like how much contamination is there moisture is there that has to be considered and the last one is energy content that is the calorific value so all these points are to be considered while purchasing a fuel. So, this will be under the fuel cost. Next is electrical energy cost. So, let us see what are the factors involved in deciding the final cost of the purchased electricity. So, first is maximum demand charges that is KVA. It means how fast the electricity is used. Next is energy charges. It means how much electricity is being consumed. Next is TOD charges that is time of day charges. It will be depending upon the peak and non-peak period when the electricity is consumed whether it is during the peak hours or the non-peak hours. Next one is power factor charge. Next one is other incentives and penalties applied from time to time. Next one is high tension tariff and low tension tariff rate changes. Next is slab rate cost and its variation. So there are different slabs in the electricity bill. Next one is type of tariff clause and the rate of for various categories. So there are different types of tariff depending upon the type of the categories it can be an LT category it can be an HT category next is 
टैरिफ रेट फॉर डेवलप्ड एंड अंडर डेवलप्ड एरिया और स्टेट सो दैट विल बी वेरिंग अकॉर्डिंगली एंड द लास्ट वन इज टैक्स हॉलीडे फॉर न्यू प्रोजेक्ट so this was about the energy cost it can be thermal energy it can be electrical energy next is let us see what is benchmarking benchmarking of energy consumption is a powerful tool for performance assessment and logical evaluation of avenues for the improvement so there are two types of benchmarking one is internal benchmarking and one is external benchmarking so in internal benchmarking historical data that is being well documented helps to bring out the energy consumption and cost trend month wise and day wise and next is trend analysis of energy consumption cost relevant production features specific energy consumption helps to understand the effect of capacity utilization on energy use efficiency and cost on the border scale so in internal benchmarking either the historical data can be collected or the trend analysis can be done next is external benchmarking external benchmarking relates to the inter unit comparison across the group of similar units so benchmarking is nothing but we are comparing with the standards next is maximum system efficiency now once we know the energy usage and the source next is to operate the equipment efficiently through the best practices in operation and maintenance as well as we can adopt some technology so let us see what are the points for maximum system efficiency first one is eliminate steam leakage by trap improvement next is maximize condensate recovery next one is adopt combustion control for maximizing combustion efficiency and the last one is replace pump fan air compressor refrigeration compressor boiler furnace heaters and the other energy consumption consuming equipment with wherever significant energy efficiency margin exist so these are the points to be considered for the maximum system efficiency now next is optimizing input energy requirement some practices can be considered for minimizing energy input requirement so let us see what are what are they so first is shuffling of compressor to match the need next is periodic review of the insulation thickness next one is identifying potential for heat exchanger networking and process integration and the last optimization of the trans transformer operation with the respect to load next approach is fuel and energy substitution so substituting existing fossil fuel with more efficient less cost and less polluting fuel such as uh, natural gas biogas or locally available agro residue so energy is an important input in the production and ways to reduce the energy dependency is first is by energy conservation and the second is by fuel substitution so let us see how the fuel can be substituted so fuel substitution kerosene and liquefied petroleum gas that is lpg have uh, substituted the soft coke in the residential use replacement of coal by coconut shell rice husk etc replacement of ldo by lshs can be done now next is energy substitution replacement of electrical heaters by the steam heaters replacement of the steam based hot water by the solar system so fuel and energy can be substituted by this methods so that's all for this video